July 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and 7 from the Old Testament. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he lives in thick darkness. O Lord, I have built a lofty temple for you, a place where you can live permanently. Then the king turned around and pronounced a blessing over the whole Israelite assembly as they stood there. He said, The Lord God of Israel is worthy of praise because he has fulfilled what he promised my father David. He told David, Since the day I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have not chosen a city from all the tribes of Israel to build a temple in which to live, nor did I choose a man as leader of my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as a place to live, and I have chosen David to lead my people Israel. Now my father David had a strong desire to build a temple to honor the Lord God of Israel. The Lord told my father David, It is right for you to have a strong desire to build a temple to honor me. But you will not build the temple. Your very own son will build the temple for my honor. The Lord has kept the promises he made. I have taken my father David's place and have occupied the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. I have built this temple for the honor of the Lord God of Israel, and set up in it a place for the ark containing the covenant the Lord made with the Israelites. He stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the entire assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform and had placed it in the middle of the enclosure. It was seven and one-half feet long, seven and one-half feet wide, and four and one-half feet high. He stood on it and then got down on his knees in front of the entire assembly of Israel. He spread out his hands toward the sky and prayed, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth. You maintain covenantal loyalty to your servants who obey you with sincerity. You have kept your word to your servant, my father David. This very day you have fulfilled what you promised. Now, O Lord God of Israel, keep the promise you made to your servant, my father David, when you said, You will never fail to have a successor ruling before me on the throne of Israel, provided that your descendants watch their step and obey my law as you have done. Now, O Lord God of Israel, May the promises you made to your servant David be realized. God does not really live with humankind on the earth. Look, if the sky and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this temple I have built. But respond favorably to your servant's prayer and his request for help, O Lord my God. Answer the desperate prayer your servant is presenting to you. Night and day may you watch over this temple, the place where you promised you would live. May you answer your servant's prayer for this place. Respond to the request of your servant and your people Israel for this place. Hear from your heavenly dwelling place and respond favorably and forgive. When someone is accused of sinning against his neighbor and the latter pronounces a curse on the alleged offender before your altar in this temple, listen from heaven and make a just decision about your servant's claims. Condemn the guilty party, declare the other innocent, and give both of them what they deserve. If your people Israel are defeated by an enemy because they sinned against you, then if they come back to you, renew their allegiance to you, and pray for your help before you in this temple, then listen from heaven. Forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave to them and their ancestors. The time will come when the skies are shut up tightly and no rain falls, because your people sinned against you. When they direct their prayers toward this place, renew their allegiance to you and turn away from their sin because you punish them. Then listen from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Certainly you will then teach them the right way to live and send rain on your land that you have given your people to possess. The time will come when the land suffers from a famine, a plague, blight and disease, or a locust invasion, or when their enemy lays siege to the cities of the land, or when some other type of plague or epidemic occurs. When all your people Israel pray and ask for help as they acknowledge their intense pain and spread out their hands toward this temple, 
Then listen from your heavenly dwelling place. Forgive their sins and act favorably toward each one based on your evaluation of their motives. Indeed, you are the only one who can correctly evaluate the motives of all people. Then they will honor you by obeying you throughout their lifetimes as they live on the land you gave to our ancestors. Foreigners who do not belong to your people Israel will come from a distant land because of your great reputation and your ability to accomplish mighty deeds. They will come and direct their prayers toward this temple. Then listen from your heavenly dwelling place and answer all the prayers of the foreigners. Then all the nations of the earth will acknowledge your reputation, obey you like your people Israel do, and recognize that this temple I built belongs to you. When you direct your people to march out and fight their enemies, and they direct their prayers to you toward this chosen city and this temple I built for your honor, then listen from heaven to their prayers for help and vindicate them. The time will come when your people will sin against you, for there is no one who is sinless, and you will be angry at them and deliver them over to their enemies, who will take them as prisoners to their land, whether far away or or close by. When your people come to their senses in the land where they are held prisoner, they will repent and beg for your mercy in the land of their imprisonment, admitting, We have sinned and gone astray. We have done evil. When they return to you with all their heart and being in the land where they are held prisoner and direct their prayers toward the land you gave to their ancestors, your chosen city, and the temple I built for your honor. Then listen from your heavenly dwelling place to their prayers for help. Vindicate them and forgive your sinful people. Now, my God, may you be attentive and responsive to the prayers offered in this place. Now ascend, O Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. May your priest, O Lord God, experience your deliverance. May your loyal followers rejoice in the prosperity you give. O oh Lord God, do not reject your chosen ones. Remember the faithful promises you made to your servant David. When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the Lord's splendor filled the temple. The priests were unable to enter the Lord's temple because the Lord's splendor filled the Lord's temple. When all the Israelites saw the fire come down and the Lord's splendor over the temple, they got on their knees with their faces downward toward the pavement. They worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, Certainly he is good. Certainly his loyal love endures. The king and all the people were presenting sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon sacrificed 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep. Then the king and all the people dedicated God's temple. The priests stood in their assigned spots, along with the Levites who had the musical instruments used for praising the Lord. These were the ones King David made for giving thanks to the Lord, and which were used by David when he offered praise, saying, Certainly his loyal love endures. Opposite the Levites, the priests were blowing the trumpets, while all Israel stood there. Solomon consecrated the middle of the courtyard that is in front of the Lord's temple. He offered burnt sacrifices, grain offerings, and the fat from the peace offerings there because the bronze altar that Solomon had made was too small to hold all these offerings. At that time, Solomon and all Israel with him celebrated a festival for seven days. This great assembly included people from Lebo Hamath in the north to the brook of Egypt in the south. On the eighth day they held an assembly, for they had dedicated the altar for seven days and celebrated the festival for seven more days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month, Solomon sent the people home. They left happy and contented because of the good the Lord had done for David, Solomon, and his people Israel. After Solomon finished building the Lord's temple and the royal palace and accomplished all his plans for the Lord's temple, and his royal palace, the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have answered your prayer and chosen this place to be my temple where sacrifices are to be made. 
when I close up the sky so that it doesn't rain, or command locusts to devour the land's vegetation, or send a plague among my people. If my people, who belong to me, humble themselves, pray, seek to please me, and repudiate their sinful practices, then I will respond from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now I will be attentive and responsive to the prayers offered in this place. Now I have chosen and consecrated this temple by making it my permanent home. I will be constantly present there. You must serve me as your father David did. Do everything I commanded and obey my rules and regulations. Then I will establish your dynasty just as I promised your father David. You will not fail to have a successor ruling over Israel. But if you people ever turn away from me, fail to obey the regulations and rules I instructed you to keep, and decide to serve and worship other gods, then I will remove you from my land I have given you. I will abandon this temple I have consecrated with my presence, and I will make you an object of mockery and ridicule among all the nations. As for this temple, which was once majestic, everyone who passes by it will be shocked and say, why did the Lord do this to this land and this temple? Others will then answer because they abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors who led them out of Egypt. They embraced other gods whom they worshipped and served. That is why he brought all this disaster down on them. God, in, in light of all that's happening in our world right now, this has to be one of the hardest passages for me to read out loud. I, I honestly have no idea why you haven't destroyed us. We deserve it. This world we live in now is so far away from anything, even remotely, what it talks about not to do in the Bible. We're like Sodom and Gomorrah times a thousand. And recently, bills have been passed approving those choices of sinful behavior. God, I, I am on my knees praying for this world. Praying for all the people in this world who think it's okay to do what we're doing these days. And it's not just common sin, although I don't want to make light of any sin. It's not little white lies. These are drastic, in your face, you can take a flying leap, God, type of sins. My heart breaks because I watch Christians who are approving of this behavior. I watch churches who are changing how they actually do church to allow for these different types of behaviors. Lord God, I pray for the people who are involved in these behaviors, the people who were involved in getting this law passed, the people who live this lifestyle day in and day out. I pray also for the people who are approving of this lifestyle. I do realize that a lot of these choices come out of hurt and anger and abuse and a desire to be loved. And I do know without a question in my mind that so many of my sinful choices were made from those same feelings, that same hurt. And I kept choosing the wrong thing over and over again instead of choosing you who could love me like nobody else in this world could love me ever. Who believed in me and everything that I was because you made me. And who would lift me up and support me and encourage me unlike anyone else around me. God, I do pray for their hearts. People are making all the wrong choices for what they believe are all the right reasons. But don't you want people to be happy? Don't you want them to be able to love who they want? Shouldn't you as a Christian understand what love actually means? And I actually know what love means. Love doesn't mean what we have brought this world to God what we have done with your world I think of our world as your temple as Solomon's temple 
where Solomon prayed over and over and over again, please, I know that these people will go astray and please, when they find themselves in prison, whether it be a literal prison or something that they've created, and they realize the error of their ways and they pray to you, God, please, please listen to them. And God, I would love to pray that to you. Because there's so many people who have created this prison. And it's not just obviously the sexual immorality that's happening. It's everything in this world. See, I don't know if I can pray what Solomon did because I don't see... I don't see us repenting from this. I don't see people willing to give up this lifestyle. I don't see people understanding what they have done in this world. The decisions that they have made. One of my friends just posted on Facebook how excited she was at these recent events. And lots of people have. But this one just struck me so clearly. She was so happy for them that they now they got to live the life that they've been wanting to for such a long time. And yet her well wishes and her excitement. She had no idea because she thought they were coming from such a great place, but they were actually condemning these people to death. God, I don't know why you don't destroy us. Although the flip side of my prayer is also, why don't you destroy us? It's so hard to watch what we have done to your temple. God, I'm on my knees. Begging for forgiveness for what the world has done, including myself. I'm begging for you to change their hearts. I'm begging for you to change their attentions and focus of all of these worldly things. I humbly beg you, if it's in your will, that they will turn away from these things and turn towards you and understand, understand that their decisions aren't just destroying them and the people around them. But their decisions, just like we saw with Israel in the early years in the Old Testament, are destroying an entire country, are in destroying an entire continent, are destroying an entire world. God, I don't even know what to pray to you. Because this is so big. I pray for grace. I pray for mercy. I pray for forgiveness. I pray with full knowledge that we don't deserve any of these things at all. And I pray, like Solomon did, that you'll hear me, that you'll listen, that you'll listen to the small shimmer of voices from the Christians who know all of this is wrong and all of this is going sideways and all of this is upside down. I pray that you'll listen to the remnant, God. And I pray all this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>